My brand new Instagram account has grown from zero to over 250,000 followers in just three months. The account gets millions of views on almost every post, and the best part is, I've made over $10,000 from it so far. But how is that possible? Well, I figured out a seven part framework that can be applied to any account to generate followers like clockwork and even make money. And it actually works. So in this video, I'm gonna reveal the account, I'm gonna show you how I made money from it, and I'm gonna give you the entire framework so that you can achieve similar results. But for this to work the way we want, we need to start at the beginning. Believe it or not, choosing a good niche is one of the most critical steps in this framework. And I know some of you are probably rolling your eyes because you've heard this a thousand times, but don't worry, this is not gonna be one of those videos that tells you to just go pick something that you're passionate about. Trust me, I've tried it all and that doesn't actually work. The truth is, choosing a niche that you care about is only about 25% of the equation. Just think, if you're passionate about something like high jump, that doesn't necessarily mean that high jump videos are a good niche for Instagram. There are three other factors that are equally important. So what are these three other factors? Well, a good niche needs to be something that is trending or that the world needs right now, something that you can make money from, something that you have skills and experience with, and yes, finally, something that you're actually passionate about. Now, I know as much as anyone that choosing a niche can be an overwhelming process. So how did I finally settle on my niche? Well, I used a simple two minute exercise that we can do together right now. Go grab a pen and a piece of paper. Once you have it, draw four concentric circles. Write three things that the world needs right now, then write three things that you could be paid for. Next, write three things that you're good at, and finally write three things that you love to do in your free time. The intersection of these four circles is your ikigai. An ikigai is an ancient Japanese concept that roughly translates to the reason for being. I like to use this as a compass to point me in the right direction whenever I'm struggling to brainstorm or feeling stuck. When I was trying to find a niche for this account, this is what my ikigai actually looked like, and it's the reason that I chose the marketing space. Since I had already been tracking this niche, I found an account in the space and acquired it to blow it up more and eventually monetize it. But maybe some of you don't really care about figuring out your calling and all that ikigai stuff. Maybe you just wanna figure out how to secure the bag. So in my next video, I'll show you a list of the most viral and profitable Instagram niches right now. That way you can bypass this step and get right into making content. Now that we've figured out our niche, we can move on to chapter two, sorting out our branding. I usually start with color because that's what grabs my attention first. Notice how these brands use green to convey growth, vitality, and balance. Or how these ones use red to convey energy, urgency, and power. Yellow represents happiness with smiley faces, sunflowers, and rubber ducks. Pink represents love and compassion. Brown represents stability. Black is the color of sophistication and power. And even white represents innocence and cleanliness. I use purple on this this channel, Digital Income Project, because it conveys imagination. Here's a full color wheel to help you generate ideas for your branding. When I was thinking about the branding for the Instagram project, I chose blue. But why blue? Well, it demonstrates wisdom and trust, two things that I knew would be crucial for this account's success. In branding, your name can be a critical role as well. If you've already chosen a name, that's great, but if you're having trouble, check out Namelix. It offers amazing ideas and it's completely free. So jumping over to Namelix, if my business is about branding and advertising, I'll start by typing in a few keywords and click generate. You can also filter if you want specific words like Apple or Amazon, or brandable names like Google and Uber. Click next and then give Namelix some more information about your business. So here I'll type that I'm a digital marketing agency helping businesses with their branding and advertising and boom. Now we have hundreds of names to choose from for our new Instagram business. You can see how it would be really easy for Namelix to come up with a custom account name like the one on my account, which, oh, by the way, is called Repute Forge. In this chapter, we also need to talk about profile optimization. Why? Because even if your content gets millions of views, 
If only 1% of those people decide to follow you, then you're gonna really struggle. At that rate, you would need 1 million views to get just 10,000 followers. But if you had a 10 or a 20% conversion rate, that same million views on your content would end up getting your account more like 100 to 200,000 followers. So let's start with the basics. You need a clean profile picture that people will recognize when they see you on their stories. Then underneath your profile, you're gonna wanna put a name here that's stacked with keywords to help people find you easier when they search. The next thing that you're gonna need is a bio that's really easy to understand. Newcomers on your profile should immediately know what to expect from your account. For example, the bio on my account says, helping you navigate the digital economy grew from zero to 500,000 followers in three months. So instantly, now new people who come to my account are gonna know that we're talking about growing online and that I actually have the credibility to do so. And speaking of retaining new traffic, if you guys could hit the like button below this video, that would mean a lot to me. Next, we're gonna start making content, but before we do, you need to understand how the algorithm actually works. You just gotta post something sometime, somewhere. Yes, obviously you're gonna need to post. But before you go and upload a bunch of random stuff and pray that it gets views, wouldn't it be nice to know how the algorithm actually works? If you think about Instagram as a game where our goal is to get as many views as possible, then the algorithm acts as the rules to the game. Once you know the algorithm, then you know the rules to the game, and once you know the rules to the game, you know how to beat the game. When you first publish your content, the Instagram algorithm shows it to a group of your followers. Here is where it gathers the first bits of information about your post. It does this by measuring the amount of engagement that it gets from this first group of people who see it. Now, when I say engagement, the first thing that probably comes to mind for you is likes. But what if I told you that that's actually not what the Instagram algorithm cares about? Instead, it tracks watch time, the view to save ratio, the view to share ratio, and the view to comment ratio. So, based on the stats that the algorithm gathers from that first group of followers who see your post, Instagram will then push your content onto another group of people. This can go one of two ways. If your post performed well with the first group, then this next group it gets shown to will be bigger and will even include some non-followers. But if your post doesn't perform well, then it's gonna get shown to a smaller group of people and eventually die out. So obviously you see the route that we're trying to take here. But how do we get there? A well-performing post will continue to have high watch time and lots of saves and shares, especially with non-followers. When this happens, your post is gonna be pushed by the algorithm and can eventually end up on the explore page. And good news, once your post reaches the explore page, this is where the floodgates can really open up. Why, you ask? Well, Instagram has one goal, keeping people on their platform. The more time that people spend on Instagram, the more ads that they can run and the more that they can profit off of your attention span. But if that explanation was confusing, don't worry. I have real life examples from my secret Instagram page that will help you understand. I uploaded this reel when the account had about 200,000 followers. On the first day, the reel was seen by about 75,000 people. When I checked the stats, I noticed that the watch time was really high along with the saves, comments, and reshares. Over the course of the next week, the video reached more and more people with its stats continuing to grow. By the end of the week, I noticed that my video was on the explore page and at that point, the growth exploded and I ended up with about a million total views. On the other hand, this post was only shown to about 45,000 people on the first day. That's because it was getting lower saves, shares, and comments from its first initial audience. Over the next few days, it was shown to smaller and smaller groups of people and it was never pushed onto the explore page. As you can see, the algorithm realized that this post wasn't getting the same level of attention and that it would be pointless for them to continue showing it to more and more people. And this second situation is what I see happen to most people on Instagram. They spend so much time creating content that isn't optimized for the algorithm, which leads to them getting no views and then wondering what went wrong. But good news, if you follow the rest of the steps that I lay out in this video, I promise that will never happen again. 
If you want to create content that will be pushed by the algorithm, start using my viral checklist. This is literally what I used to grow from 0 to 250,000 followers in 3 months. Whenever you make a piece of content, start by asking yourself these 7 questions. Will someone stop scrolling and actually look at this post? Will someone spend a long time looking at this? Will someone want to save this for later? Will someone want to share this with a friend? Will someone comment something interesting on this? Will they feel satisfied that they consumed this? And will they want to follow my account for more like this in the future? If you can honestly answer yes to all seven of these questions, then you have a viral post. And if you want proof that this actually works, let's just look at one of the posts from my account that broke the algorithm. This video got 17 million plays with over 29,000 hours of watch time. That's the equivalent to someone watching this on repeat for the next three and a half years. But that 17 million view count is not from the 530,000 likes. No, it's because of the 294,000 reshares and over 300,000 saves. But do you want to hear the best part? This video got my account 72,000 new followers. You heard that right. 72,000 new people decided to follow my page, all thanks to this viral checklist. I'm going to walk you through my entire process and show you how you can actually optimize your content and trigger each of these checkboxes later in the video. Moving on, now we're entering chapter four, which is content. I've either created or helped create some of the most viral content on Instagram, and I've done it on different accounts in different niches. This reel that I made got 7 million views on the account we're talking about, and this slide post that I wrote has over 221,000 likes. I have many case studies of this working with clients in different niches, but the process that I use to create the content is the same every time. Before we get into my workflow creation process, you should understand how your favorite creators are tricking you into watching their videos. And you can do all of these things, but at the end of the day, it means jack shit. A lot of people say I did my best and I think they're lying or they're cutting themselves short. You want me to be happy? Eat shit. Learn to be comfortable with discomfort. Notice how they start the video with a negative statement that indicates that you're doing something wrong. This makes you hyper aware of your problem, so you keep watching, hoping for a solution. This is what I like to call a negative hook, and it's one of the most powerful methods to hook people's attention. I'll be sharing a full list of the strongest types of hook in a future video, so make sure to subscribe. But for now, my biggest and most important rule is to never, ever start your video like this. Hey guys, I'm Thomas. Welcome back to my page. Today, we're gonna talk about blah, blah, blah. The truth is you only have about three seconds to hook someone on Instagram. If you waste this time by introducing yourself or talking about something irrelevant, you're never gonna get any views. When it comes to making content, it all starts with an idea. Messing up in the idea stage is gonna undermine the entire process. In other words, if you screw this up, you have no chance of going viral. So whether I'm creating a reel, a carousel, or a single slide post, I need to choose a topic that my audience actually cares about. On my Repute Forge page, since I'd be talking about ideas like sales, marketing, advertising, content, and branding, every piece of content that I make needs to relate to those subjects. Think about any fitness page that you follow. The people who run those pages make a list of things like workouts, diet, supplements, and recovery. Then all their content is about one of those topics. My point is, this is the process you need to use regardless of what niche you're in. Next, we need to come up with some ideas for our content. And this is where I see the most amount of creators screw up. Most people simply throw shit at a wall and hope that something sticks. They think that they've come up with this great idea, but then when they post it, they end up getting no views and they're left wondering why. The truth about making viral content on Instagram is so simple. You need to steal like an artist. You need to find something that is already proven to work and then use a similar framework. Let me be clear though, I'm not telling you to copy other posts word for word. That's 
copyright and it could have consequences. But what you can do is go find a post that's already performing well in your niche and then go make something even better by putting your own spin on it. And remember our viral checklist? Our goal is to trigger as many of these as possible each time we put a piece of content out. But how do you actually make posts that pop off like this? This got over 100,000 likes on another one of my accounts and I'm gonna show you how you can make it in less than three minutes. Just come into Canva and select create a design in the upper right and then scroll down to Instagram post. Once you're in the post, obviously change the background to whatever color you want. For us, we're gonna change this to black and then come over to the left-hand side and select text. You're gonna wanna find a font that feels creative to match the vibe of the post that we're going for. Then just start inputting all the text. And finally, to get this cool line looking effect, you're just gonna come over to elements and select line. And then you're gonna graphically organize it like it is in the image. As you can see, this literally took me less than 60 seconds and you can do the same thing and make a post that gets over 100,000 likes. Just look at some of these viral posts from the top creators on Instagram. All of them can be made in Canva in less than five minutes. And when it comes to my account that grew from zero to 250,000 followers, you can actually make videos like this inside of Canva as well. It does take a lot longer than this, but I will be making a full step-by-step -step tutorial on this in a future video. Next up, chapter five, learning from the data. Insights often get overlooked because quite frankly, they're a little boring. But even though it might be dull, the information stored here has the power to take you from 10,000 views to over a million views on the exact same piece of content. To generate as much organic reach as possible, use the guidelines I'm about to share. First, use keywords in your captions strategically. This is really important if your account has less than 10,000 followers because captions tie into a concept called SEO or search engine optimization. If you aren't familiar with how SEO works on Instagram, just think about searching something on Google. When you search how to hard boil eggs on Google, tons of articles are gonna pop up explaining how to do it. Those articles likely have the keywords hard boil eggs or how to in them. We need to have those types of keywords in our Instagram captions to make sure that when people are looking something like that up on Instagram, our posts actually show up for them. Let me show you an example on this on my page, Repute Forge. I made a video about how to increase sales and in the caption, I sprinkled in the phrase, how to get more sales in 2024 and the best sales tricks because I know that people are probably searching for those phrases. The next simple trick that anyone can use to immediately get more views is simply by sharing your post to your story. I've seen this get an extra 10 to 20% more views in that first 24 hours, which is crucial during that embryoic phase. For those of you concerned with location, I try to always tag the location of one of my posts as somewhere where my ideal target viewer probably lives. So for this account, it would be places like LA, London, New York, or Miami. This next one is important intentionally choose what time you post. Instagram gives you this information for a reason. If you upload when the majority of your audience is sleeping, then that post is gonna get off to a slow start, causing the algorithm to think that your post sucks. What the fuck? So how do you figure out when the best time to post is? Well, just go to insights and then scroll all the way down. For the best chance of going viral, you wanna try to post one or two hours before the biggest amount of your audience is active. Next, for those of you trying to get some early action, do not ever, ever buy engagement. The people who I usually see do this think that maybe if I just buy some extra likes, then people are gonna think my account's better and then it's gonna get shown to more people. But here's the problem. If you have 10,000 likes on one of your posts and no saves or shares, then the algorithm is gonna know that something fishy is going on and it's not gonna end up pushing it. In my opinion, this is actually part of the reason that Instagram initially introduced the save and share buttons. They wanted to start preventing people from cheating the system by buying likes. Look, I know that all these statistics can be confusing, so I wanna hook you guys up with even more information. This is how you should be interpreting your stats. If your content has low views, it's not grabbing attention. You need to work on your hook. If your content has low likes, then it's not relevant to your audience. You need to go back and work on the topic. 
If there are no comments, it's not engaging. You need to work on your delivery. If it has low shares, then it's not relatable. You need to work on making that content something that people will want to share with their friends. And if it has no saves, then it's not valuable. Work on finding something that people will want to save and come back to later. Whenever I come into my analytics, I really like to study the retention graphs. I take note of where people dropped off so that I can improve my next piece of content. Oh, and let's say that we see someone drop off at the last second. That might not seem like a big deal to you, but if the video is only 10 seconds long, then one second equals 10% of the entire video. 10% is a lot, so you need to work on improving the ending of your video. And these are the kinds of little tweaks that I directly advise on with my private clients, because overlooking something this simple can have a massive impact on your overall reach. Chapter six, growth hacking. I've studied and tracked the performance of over 50,000 viral pieces of content on Instagram. And maybe that makes me a little bit of a nerd, but I'm gonna distract you from that fact with this next clip. So since you've studied a ton of viral data, What's the secret to make boring stuff go viral? Well, Joe, I realize that the answer to this riddle has much less to do with an algorithm and much more to do with basic human psychology. And once I realized that, everything changed. Interesting. How so? Content that gets someone to stop and look is going to hook someone's attention by being bold and interesting. Here's an example that does this really well. Go to sleep. Go to bed. What are you doing here? See how this immediately hooks you and has over 1 million likes? People are gonna watch all the way through if your storytelling is good or that the visuals are easy to follow. Something like this does a great job of that. The man doesn't know that there is a snake underneath. The woman doesn't know that there is a stone crushing the man. Again, over 1 million likes because you wanna see where this story is going. People save posts that they find valuable to read for later. So something like this from my account. This brand feels premium and this one doesn't. Why is that? It's the power of white space. Many websites feel cluttered and users get overwhelmed resulting in less engagement. But wide space allows the design to breathe and gives the brand a calm, confident, and premium feel to the user. Viewers share posts because they relate to it or because they want to signal to their peers that this is important to them. This post got 75 million plays and over 70,000 shares because people just relate to it. Viewers comment to be funny or to argue. And by the way, I low-key love getting trolls in the comments because it usually ends up making things go more viral. And finally, people follow to consume more content like this on a daily basis. So you wanna make sure that your profile is bingeable. Once you understand these basic psychological principles, it becomes much more clear how to make content that will actually trigger the algorithm organically. But I should also mention that if you do want to generate some quick results, obviously you can pay to play on Instagram. That big bright blue boosting button isn't a secret and you can get some extra reach with it if you have a budget. But if you want to grow faster than that, I found a far more effective way to get followers fast by pouring some extra gas on the fire. But this strategy only works on certain types of accounts who have a digital business, but feel free to reach out to me if that's you. Speaking of business, let's move on to chapter seven, which is monetization. You're probably wondering, well, how did this guy make $10,000 in three months from a brand new Instagram account? To make money on Instagram, you really have four main options. The first option is with affiliate deals. An affiliate deal is where you, the creator, sell someone else's product or service and in exchange take home a percentage of the sale. For example, someone who talks about eating healthy could promote this clean, expensive water filter. Then every time someone purchases through their link, they would make a percentage of the deal. Not bad, right? Well, the second option you have is to monetize with brand deals. For example, a company approached me when I was at about 100,000 followers and basically said, hey, we'd like to do paid deals on your account. I then told her my price and we negotiated and landed on a deal for $2,000 for four posts over the next month. This was pretty good money for being just about a month after the account started, but if you don't wanna wait around for advertising 
advertisers to approach you, you can actually approach them more effectively. The best way to do this is by going to LinkedIn and finding the person in charge of partnerships or marketing and sending them an email directly. I've covered that process in other videos extensively and I'll link them below this video. Your third option for monetization would be selling a physical product. This would include any drop shipping model, t-shirts, mugs, journals, merch, any other supplements. And this can work great for the right type of account. But one of my biggest issues with physical products is that you have to handle the inventory and that can be a huge hassle. So I decided not to do this method on my account. In my opinion, the best way to monetize in 2024 is with option four, which is a paid digital product or service. This could be a budget tracker. You could sell a service like building a website for someone. You could have a paid community or a course or even something like an elite mastermind. I like this model because you just have to build something once and then sell twice. Well, really you can sell it an infinite number of times, but twice sounded a little better. If you think about it, this is what all the top dogs on social media are actually doing to make their money. A few examples of people doing this whose names you probably know are Iman Godzi. He left his SMMA agency to build his personal brand and sell digital products. Jordan Welsh is telling you to do e-com, but in reality, he's going all in on his personal brand and selling a digital product. And yes, even top G, Andrew Tate, is selling digital digital products. This business model has been kept a secret for far too long. And my goal is to help aspiring digital entrepreneurs to see through all the bullshit and shiny objects on social media and get straight to the business models that all the top dogs are actually using to make their money. And yes, in case you were wondering, this is the actual monetization strategy that I used to make over $10,000 in my first couple months with this account. I had a digital product on that page that sold on autopilot up to this point. And I know that you probably wanna understand exactly what that means. So I'm gonna quickly run through it at a very high level in this video. And then for those of you who want a deeper understanding and are willing to sit through me at a little bit of a slower pace than this super edited YouTube video, I'll drop a link below. Essentially, all you need to know is that we were selling something called a digital product, which is different than a physical product. Traditionally, you'd build something and then you'd sell it. Like think of a t-shirt, you'd build something once and then you'd sell it. But again, with a digital product, you can build something once and then sell it an infinite number of times. So on my Instagram page, I just found a digital product that was applicable to my audience. I built it once and then I sold it on autopilot using this funnel. So my audience was getting value and I was making money, win-win. Truth be told, this entire account started out as an experiment and I was really happy with the results. But this video that you're watching right now took a few weeks to edit. And since then, well, some things have changed. Unfortunately, my account doesn't have 250,000 followers anymore because now it has 530,000 followers. Over the last 90 days alone, my content has been seen by more than 40 million people. And as far as monetization goes, it's made more than 10,000. But I've been testing out some new strategies on there that are gonna break the internet. And I'll be sharing my findings in a future video. But look, I mean it when I say that anyone can do this once they learn the game. There's an art to growing on social media. I've done it on Instagram, I've done it on this YouTube channel. My point is this method works. So go and apply this to whatever account that you're trying to build right now. This video was obviously long and this was a big step for me because I'm revealing an important account, but I'm super excited to see where you guys take this and share more with you in the future. I got to go get back to growing this thing to the moon, but I'll try to answer as many questions as I can below. If you want to see more like this, just click on either of the two videos above and I will talk to you guys soon.